What I'm saying when I say ideas don't matter is that everybody has the same ideas, right? It's like you think of an idea and then like two weeks later, you hear somebody's building it, right? So like the world is kind of coming together on the same ideas. Like, hey, I have a really cool idea. Flying cars, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. That doesn't fucking matter, right? How are you gonna build a fucking flying car? It matters, not like, oh yeah. Oh, it's a really cool idea to send a rocket. Yeah, great. Building a fucking rocket's really hard, right? So ideas don't matter. It's execution behind the idea that really matters. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Paul Bragill. I guess you say engineer turned founder turned uh, venture capitalist. But yeah, in general, I just like to work with and get involved with cool companies around the world and especially with really interesting entrepreneurs. We've invested in companies like Zappos and Unity. What I'm really well known for probably here in Silicon Valley is that I was an early investor and advisory board member to Uber. I joined a company when there was less than 10 people working there. The valuation was puny. So it was an amazing you know, exit and seeing that company rise is you know, one of the highlights of my career. In terms of uh, multiples, it's over 2,000x. So things have gone pretty good there, right? Uh, it was a small check, but still life-changing. 2,000x is uh, pretty ridiculous. I built three companies. Uh, two of which were in Silicon Valley, and then I sold two of those companies. Uh, and yeah, for the last 13 years, I have now been investing into young startups. Uh, in general, my whole thesis is that I like to invest in companies started by really interesting and amazing entrepreneurs. So I graduated school in 1999. So yeah, 24 years ago I graduated. I got like really seriously, I mean, I was playing games before I was quite young, but I got really into programming and, and tech. Uh, in 1994. So like, that's when I kind of first started doing my early kind of programming stuff. So when I started my first company, yeah, there was no word for startup, there was no word entrepre entrepreneurship, that word didn't exist yet, right? Uh, that shows how old I am, sadly. But people knew what I was doing, because it's pretty simple. Like I was able to explain to them like, hey, I'm, I'm pursuing a dream. Like I, I played games, I'm an engineer, I had a couple other friends, like artists and other programmers, and we want to make a game, right? And yeah, so people at first thought this was dumb and insane. Uh, my parents, I remember my mom was like really disappointed. Cause she's like, Paul, you graduated one of the top two universities in America for engineering. Why are you not getting a job, right? And I was like, well, I can make more money, right? Yeah, people were a bit confused or surprised that I didn't get a really high paying job. But then about like nine months later, I remember we signed our first contract. I, I signed a really big deal with a, a Japanese company called Capcom. You might know Capcom, they made a game called Street Fighter 2. And they decided to publish one of my games. I was 21 years old and I made more money than my parents made in two years. People very quickly changed their tune. They're like, oh, okay, he might know what he's doing, right? But yeah, initially people were sad or confused because yeah, entrepreneurship and stars was not a thing. That has obviously changed in the last 25 years. Now it's a really hot thing, but uh, it was a crazy idea when I started doing that type of stuff. I'm not the most eloquent person. I like to get to the point. First and foremost, like don't overthink things. I mean, like I told you, all my adventures, also was like, if you overthink things, you will usually talk yourself out, right? But once you take that first step, then the second and third step are much easier, right? There's always hard steps and big hills and mountains along the way, but once you start going, the hardest part a lot of times is just, just starting. So it's really simple, but it, it's the hardest thing to do a lot of times. I don't know why. For me, it's not that hard, but like I know a lot of people have that issue, right? I think it's a combination of things. So it's really hard to get started because one, you're comfortable in life. I have a nice job, right? Or like two, parents or families like, don't do that, right? Like, or it's really hard to start because it seems scary, right? Like, yeah, all these things are out there, but the reality is that's all bullshit, right? It doesn't really matter what other people think and how hard it is. It's what makes you excited, right? So yeah, starting should not be so hard. It's just all these outside factors and society and culture and family that change our minds, right? I think that's the biggest thing that holds the most talented people back is they have other people telling them what, giving them bad advice, I would say. So my advice is don't listen to them, just get started. If you wanna do something, you're dreaming about something, do that because otherwise if you don't, you'll regret it. You look at 10, 20, 30 years and be like, Oh, I wish I tried. Yeah, just try. Worst comes to worst, you fail. At least you tried. You'll never ever regret that you didn't try. If you're younger, take the time where your parents' house and it's really cheap to live, right? You don't have much cost. Build stuff, right? Just start tinkering, start creating things, get your friends together, right? Because you're able to test a lot of things. You're also able to test working with people. Low risk environment, right? When you get 30 or 40, you might have a girlfriend, wife, kids, mortgages, whatever. It becomes harder, right? I'm not saying it's impossible, but when you're young, you're 17, 18, 22, what happens? 
What is the worst thing? You fail, you go move back home with your parents. Right? It's like, just take the risk. You have almost nothing to lose when you're young. Yeah, so my first company, I was kind of on top of the world and I'd sold and I'd made money and I was super young, right? And the second company, it was a little bit different, right? So we were trying to build something way bigger. So like the game stuff was big and we sold hundreds of thousands of copies. We had part of some really big projects, but still like we had other people like publishers and stuff around us. This product, we were trying to build one of the first social networks, right? The idea of games kind of existed, even though the games we made were original, but like the game industry was there. But like with our second company, we tried to build a brand new industry. Like the idea of 2004, what is a social network? This does not exist. Like Facebook did not exist. MySpace. We all started within a couple months of each other, right? The, the company failed for a couple reasons. Like one, it was a brand new industry. It was very hard. Two, I mean, if I look back about myself, you know, honestly, maybe I was a bit cocky. I had done so well with my first company, so maybe I thought everything I touch is gold. Maybe that, right? And then the third, I mean, like you know, we just missed time certain things. Like it was a very competitive game, right? Like, and only one winner would happen. It wasn't like, you know, there'd be 10 winners in that space. Either one person won, AKA Facebook, and everyone else died, right? So yeah, while we did well, we had millions of users, we raised money, we had awesome engineers. Like the team was great. It just that we didn't win. And um, I learned a lot from that. Uh, I got, kind of got punched in the face a bit, but uh, it was a good learning lesson. And I was able to take all those things and apply them to my third company. Yeah, I mean, failing sucked, right? After my first company doing so well. The reason it sucked, obviously one, it sucked because I wanted to win. I'm a very competitive person. But then two, it sucked because like, I had a whole team of people relying on me, right? To raise more money or whatever it is, right? To lead the company. And when I had to let go of people or when we didn't get money, like I remember there was days where I cried in the pillow. I'm like, I have to fail. I have to fire a bunch of people today. Or like, oh my God, how am I gonna pay the rent and the bills for the team next month, right? So there was a lot of stressful times. But yeah, I mean, you, you get through it, right? Like I said, what was really amazing is that while we did fail, like we had people that stuck away all the way till the end, right? And we had actually a bunch of people that stayed there even after I ran out of money, for many months they stayed there, right? And so I love those people. Those people are part of my family nowadays. But yeah, it was rough. It's admitting defeat in anything sucks, especially when you're a very competitive person. But you know, you, you kind of sit down and you kind of let it breathe a bit and you kind of take back what you learned and you move forward, right? You don't give up, you keep on pushing. This is important, when you're a founder, there's ways of losing your credibility, right? And failing is not one way. Like failing happens, right? We all fail, right? The key thing is, one, how did you fail? Did you fail with honor? Did you fail with transparency, right? Did you fail because you, you know, tried a million things that didn't work out, right? Versus some people, they fail because like, eh, they give up. Or uh, they fail and they kind of go quiet, they disappear, right? That's not honorable, right? Like, but if you go out there and say, I tried this, 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 and okay, I didn't do this. Or like for us, like I know for my team, like I said, we didn't pay ourselves salary for like almost six months. We did everything we could to save the company. All of our investors knew this, right? And I was sending an update every month. This is how much money's left. This is what we're trying. This is like, please, right? And like people know that, hey, these kids, they did everything they could. It didn't work out, right? So we didn't get blamed for that. They're like, hey, these people are good people. And if they try something again, we wanna back them, right? And so for me, now that I'm an investor, I look at the same thing too. I know some of my companies are failing. Right now, there's companies failing, right? And some, they disappear. You know what? Those guys will never get my money again. But some people are telling me, what's going on? They're trying this, hey, respect. I will potentially invest in your next company, right? So yeah, it's really important to fail with honor, I guess you could say, right? So yeah. Honestly, a lot of the companies we invested to, they're great founders, but they were not known founders, right? Uh, a lot of times, you know, people start out from very humble beginnings, right? And so, yeah, let's say companies like Unity and Uber, right? These were cases where I know the founders already, right? So uh, the founder of Uber, Travis, uh, he was a friend of mine. And funny enough, when my second company was failing, his second company was failing. And he lived maybe like three or four blocks away from here in San Francisco. So every week or two, we get together, have a beer and say, fuck, this sucks, right? And so we just became friends, right? And then when he started his next company, which was Uber, he's like, hey, Paul, I need some help hiring engineers. And so at first I joined as an advisor, right? Because I didn't even sold my company yet, right? So I came as an advisor and then later put some money in. But a lot of the best deals I got into is because I just knew the people, right? I was friendly with them. Or a friend of a friend. Somebody's like, hey, you gotta talk to Paul. He's an amazing investor. So for me, we usually don't have to fight to get in a deal. We get invited to come in. Because also now, I've been doing this for 13 years. We have a good reputation. We've been in tons of cool companies. 
people actually reach out to us and want our money. I very rarely have to like beg to get into a deal. If I'm begging to get into a deal, then maybe I'm doing something wrong. So yeah, most of my best deals though were in people that they were not famous or nobody wanted to give them money or very little people didn't. I was just one of the few people who believed them first, right? That's something that me and my brother take a lot of pride on. We like to be one of the first checks in, right? So we like to be money in first and then other people come after us. Kind of helps start the ball rolling. That's really important to us. I have not exited Uber fully. Um, I've sold some along the way. So I sold some like a year before the IPO, like at a $50 billion valuation. I sold some, you know, throughout the pandemic kind of offloading to kind of diversify my portfolio. But I still own about, I think, 30 or 40% of the shares I had originally 13 years ago. So also one thing that really big belief that me and my brother have is like we're super long-term investors. If we like a company and we like the founders, we like the team, we stick with them as long as possible, even post IPO. Kind of I touched on this earlier, but like some of the things I see in the really best entrepreneurs is one, they're kind of very persistent and they don't give up, right? Every company has hard times, so they, they know how to push through. And then two, like they're inspirational. And when I say inspiration, it doesn't mean like, oh, they're great talking and they're gonna be like talking from a balcony. Like, no, some people inspire because they're a very good engineer and they inspired by the awesome code they made, right? And some person's very inspirational because they're able to go out there and raise money really well, right? Or somebody's really inspirational because they're able to paint a very good vision and kind of make a good design, right? So the key thing is the person's being inspirational because they have to be able to go out there and attract other amazing people, right? And so I think if you have those two skills, hardworking, never giving up, and then inspirational, you put those together, it's a great foundation for an amazing entrepreneur. Everyone has an idea, right? Have you ever had it happen where you think of an idea and then like two weeks later, you hear somebody's building it, right? So like the world is kind of coming together on the same ideas. Like not, that doesn't make it special. What makes it special is execution, the way you're building the company. Nobody wants your idea. You have to start building yourself, right? No one's gonna build the idea for you. You have to take ownership of your own ideas and own them and build them. So ideas don't matter. It's execution behind the idea that really matters. Bad execution's sloppy, behind schedule, not hiring the right people for the right thing. It's like, I can give you tons of examples of people who are bad ex execution. Yeah, I mean, good execution just means like on time, regimented, right? Attention to detail. Be frugal, hire people as needed, if at all. Put your hand out and execute and just get through the hard times and then it'll become easier, right? Also, when you start a company in a hard time, when it becomes an easy time, it's, it's super easy, right? But right now it's also easier to hire people. It's easier to go out to get resources. So yeah, just put your head down, execute, don't complain, be very, very efficient with your money and you'll be fine. Entrepreneurship is creating something out of nothing, right? You're manifesting something with limited resources. You're bringing magic to the planet, right? Uh, you're building something that you've always wanted to see exist and you make that happen. That's a beautiful thing. To go out there, have an idea, and bring it to reality. It's a beautiful, beautiful skill. Yeah, I mean, I guess the key thing is like one, focus on humans, right? So just always be curious about people, right? Uh, I'd say be curious in general, right? So what's cool about VC is like, you're paid to learn new stuff, right? Or you're paid to like invest alongside people who are gonna create new industries or disrupt industries, right? So stay curious, stay humble, and what I say by humble is like, don't put yourself above people, just be nice to people. And I think everything else kind of comes afterwards. But as long as you're, you're kind of very curious and you're nice to people, and I'd say also hardworking, if you have two of those three, if not all three skill sets, you'll do pretty well. But yeah, you have to listen, you have to understand, you have to like absorb information and process and you know, kind of make decisions based upon that.